PID controllers, or process controllers you might call them. If you're growing mushrooms, there's a good chance you probably use one of these. Even if you're doing other things like brewing beer, you most likely use one of these for one part of the process. Now I believe PID stands for uh, Proportionate Integral Derivative, I think it is. Um, they're, they're reasonably complex in how they function. Just look it up on YouTube if you don't know. But what these do, is they will raise, um, for mushroom growing, they will raise the temperature of your substrate to a set point, and then they will keep it there. Now they do this by turning an element on and off, this is an element right here, to keep um, uh, water basically boiling, and that water's then gonna heat up the substrate, and it's gonna turn that boiling water on and off, on and off, on and off, to balance that substrate at a certain temperature. Now I've got one functioning outside, um, I've been using it for quite some time now, but the one problem I have is my outside one is only 2.5 or 2.4 kilowatts, and I want more kilowatts. This element here is 4.5 kilowatts, so I want to get this one connected up and running. But I can't just shove this element and turn it on because it's uh, simply going to draw too much power. So I need to rebuild a new PID controller to run it. So there's a few things we've had to go buy. One, we've got an old, um, not too old, an old PID controller. I used to use this for humidification. These can be repurposed for anything. They can basically control anything. So we're going to repurpose this to control temperature. I've got a relay here, solid state relay. Now that relay is good for uh, 25 amp at around 100 to 480 volts. So that should be enough to turn this on and off. A few other things we've got, switch, power plug, for running, when you're running 20 amps, you need um, a larger power plug. We were running 20 amps for these. The usual amperage at the wall here is 10 amps, and they use a small plug, but because the amps are so high, we need one of these here. A couple of our cable glands, some uh, connectors, chocolate block, and some thick cable. Now the cable as well needs to be thick to handle, again, 20 amps. Um, this is four mil uh, squared cable. Um, 250 to 440 uh, volt. Um, I went and got that from the electrical supply store. Um, so that's what we will be using. Now if you've never rigged up or you don't know how to rig up, um, or you're not qualified to, rig, to connect uh, electrical equipment like this, uh, don't do it. Get it. Always get a qualified person to do it. Oh, and one last thing we do need for this is we actually need a thermo, uh, thermo couple, they're called. I've got a thermal couple, it's actually outside, and it's just a big probe, and that takes the temperature, and that sends the temperature reading to the PID, so the PID knows um, how, how hot our substrate is, and can turn that on and off accordingly. So you can see here, I've got the switch mounted, um, that's just mounted on the front of the box, and right next to it, we'll put our PID here. That PID is just going to slot in, like that, and on the back, it's got this plastic clip here, that simply goes over the back there and it's got these wee brackets here which click on and apply pressure to it. So there we are, that's held in there nicely, that's not coming out. And we have PID and 20 amp switch. So here we have it here, nearly finished. You pop the top off, you can see the switch, the PID um, and the relay down in the bottom there. Now I've just mounted the relay sideways and I've screwed it onto the wall. Um, just because it was a bit too tall and it might intrude on the roof if I face it up. You could have mounted it on a DIN rail, but I thought it was pointless bolting a DIN rail on. I need to connect that to it when I can just bolt that relay straight through the wall there. So that's all good. Um, everything looks wired up nicely. Everything's been terminated with either these forks or these here. So all the wires are tidy. Um, there's a 20 amp switch here. So the only thing I'd left to do is to get the thermocouple and we'll probably put a little port for the thermocouple to go through on the side um, and then we can put our cables on the end, connect it to this bad boy here and we are good to go. So we're outside here with our um, boiler, I've got the top off so I can access the water there. I've taken our old PID controller off the wall, this is it here, um, this has run for me for a number of years now, um, it's been really good. Um, really simple in its construction, um, but I've basically gutted that. I've disconnected the thermocouple, that's it there, um, that long one there, and we've also disconnected the float switch, the safety float switch. They're both now wired into my new one. So that one there can go into storage as a backup device, because we like backup devices. This is the new one here, a bit bigger, with this element and plug right here. This element will just directly swap out for this one, and this plug here, goes right into the wall, and that new switch there I've had installed. You need a bigger switch because we're running um, 20 amps. That is a 32 amp switch up there, I believe. But to empty this, to, to change this, 
All we need to do is get um, our, our siphon here. Once that siphon has sucked all that water out, I'll disconnect this element here. We'll take that one out and we'll put this one in. So I simply take that element out there, which we've just taken out. Um, you can see it's got a little bit of um, scale build up on it. And we've just put our new element in. That's really straightforward to put in. They just come out like this here. So that's a new one there. So this just goes straight in there. And that should be ready to go. So we'll run it through a test now. So it's filling up now. Um, here's our new box here. We're going to plug this in. And I need to go over the settings in the Omron E5CC and just make sure they're correct. Make sure it's set to thermocouple. I believe I had this set to a 0 to 10 volt um, interface, which we're not using now. So we need to shift the settings back in the PID to a... Um, a, a, a thermocouple and they've got a setting in there for a K-type thermocouple which this one here is. This is a fairly good thermocouple. You spend, if you're going to buy a thermocouple to control things, you spend, you know, 100 bucks, 150 bucks on one. You get a good one, you don't get that crap. I've bought crap before and they just corrode out and die. It's better to do it, buy one that's going to last a test of time. So we'll get, um, we don't need to do anything with this, we just need to make sure that the Omron is functioning. Right, so it's plugged in at the wall up there, and I should just be able to flip this on. And it blew the breaker. Alright, so since that last week clip there where the breaker blew, it's actually been quite a while, it's been a couple of months I think. Um, what had happened is they had wired up um, the power for this into the three phase breaker, and this is in three phase, and because they put it on the three phase, all the draw was coming through a single phase, it was just popping that breaker as soon as I turned it on. So I had to get the electrician back in and get it fixed, uh, which he did, he rewired it. Um, and this is working perfectly now. You can see I can just turn that on and off, it's got a bit of dust on it, it just sort of sits here. Turn it on, um, the PID comes on straight away and starts feeding power into this here, um, and then the steam just starts hammering into my uh, big tank, which is right here, I don't know if you can quite see that. Uh, that tank, we run 500 kilos in that tank, um, and we run that at the moment three times a week. So we're putting through about 1.5 tonne of uh, substrate, um, that's metric tonne, so that'll be like, oh, I don't know what that is, 3,500 pound or something uh, each week. Uh, and we're doing it all through this wee guy here on this four and a half a kilowatt element. If you do need the plans uh, for this, the plans and the parts list are available for download, uh, check the top comment. But if you are going to be sterilizing a bulk mushroom substrate, yeah, I recommend you um, putting something together uh, like this. Um, they work really amazingly. Um, there's nothing wrong with having a good amount of power as well. You can, I did run a 2.5 kilowatt element for quite some time. Um, the 4.5 kilowatt element just does everything faster, um, which I like. We do also have this blue cable here as, as our safety. There's the um, PID coming out the bottom, uh, sorry, there's the thermocouple coming out at the bottom there. This is the safety float uh, switch, which I've got another video which shows me installing that. Um, use a safety flow switch. You don't want these things boiling dry. If they boil dry, that element just heats up that metal to super hot, uh, big fire risk. So um, yeah, the uh, safety float valve um, should be in them.